So lately I've been playing around with the V16 engine DLC in the game, which is a DLC where you unlock V16 engines, and I discovered that you could make a 1.1 liter V16 engine. It's also going to be turbocharged and it's going to be all wheel drive with a manual gearbox. Did I mention it's going to be a twin turbo V16? Because I, I feel like I can't stress that enough guys. It's going to be a twin turbocharged V16 rally hatchback. So if you guys don't know what the Toyota GR Yaris is, it is a turbocharged all-wheel drive manual rally hatchback built by Toyota for racing, but they also made a street version. So today basically we are going to be building that, except if the engineers and designers snorted a ton of cocaine beforehand. What's up guys, I'm Rai and this is another automation video. So what we're doing is building our GR Yaris competitor. I think it's a tiny bit smaller than the Yaris. It's also going to be a bit older, 2012 model year. This is going to be before the all-wheel drive GR Yaris was built. You might be wondering why. Well, the answer is simple. Because we can. Now, before we continue with this build, I want to give a huge shout out to Opera GX, which is the sponsor for today's video. If you guys don't know what Opera GX is, it's pretty much the best gaming browser that money can buy. Except it's actually free, so you, you don't need to pay anything. First off, something called GX Profiles. Now what this does is let you set up your browser in basically any way you desire. If you want to be like me and play video games while browsing the internet at the same time, you can configure your browser to be on potato mode, which makes the browser run very, very bare bones. There's also a preset profile called Rogue, which clears all your browsing data every time you close it, which is the profile that I like to use just in case you're doing a little bit of secret searching. It's honestly super easy to set up. You just need to go to browser settings, manage GX profiles, create profile, and you can create a custom GX profile, or you can use one of the preset ones that they've made. And for every profile that you make, you will have your own individual shortcut for the application on your taskbar, which is handy if you want to switch modes quickly. Now, the next huge feature I just want to tell you guys about is the dark pages feature. So basically what this does, and it's super easy to do, is force dark mode on all the web pages which if you're like me, you don't want that bright white screen to blind you. No, 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 no. You have to force dark pages because obviously it's the best thing to do. Other features include the integrated social media channel sort of system here. So you can access things like Discord, Twitter, or anything else that you use in the browser itself, which is super handy, obviously. And it helps that it's convenient and easy to use. And lastly, I want to mention the customization. This browser is more customizable than pretty much everything. It's super easy to set your own theme, wallpaper, or have a custom color and customize everything from scratch. I personally am using my own channel's themes for my background. You can also choose from a preset color palette or design your own for even more enhanced customizability. The last thing I want to mention is that there's also a mobile version for Opera GX, which has so many of the same features you would know and love just in a mobile package. If you guys aren't already using it, download Opera GX for free today, link in the description below. Again, big thank you to Opera GX for sponsoring the video, but now, let's get back to automation. Now, more cylinders obviously equals better uh, in every single way, of course, and that's exactly what we're going to do. It's also going to be the world's smallest 16-cylinder engine. It's going to be a 1.1 liter turbocharged V16 engine in a four-wheel drive manual hatchback. I don't know. I don't know if I've gone crazy or if you guys have gone crazy because you're watching this. I think it's safe to say we're all going just a little bit crazy building this thing. Let's go ahead. Partial carbon fiber chassis because that's what the Toyota Yaris GR has. It's got a bit of carbon fiber here and there. Monocoque chassis type. Let's go for a simple like AHS steel chassis material. So something not too fancy in the middle here. It's going to be a front engine rear wheel drive based platform. It's going to be four wheel drive though. So we could fit a 4.5 liter V16, but we want a small one, okay? It's going to be 1.6 liter V16, but we could still go smaller than this. So we're going to go to engine variant and lower this down here to a 1.1 liter V16 engine. Uh, there's not really any benefits of having like a tiny V16 engine, but I feel like we have to do it, guys. We are compelled to build the best V16 car ever. And by best, of course, I mean it's going to be the absolute worst V16 car ever. We'll give it harmonic dampers. We'll give it just, you know, some heavy-duty internals here. It's going to be expensive, but like not like a million-dollar car. This is going to be an expensive car, but not a million-dollar car. 
Let's give it like 12 to one compression ratio, pretty high cams, pretty high springs lifters. We'll give it a VBT. It's going to be a twin turbo with a smart boost and all the bells and whistles for the turbocharged goodies. We're going to leave this for now. We'll tune this later on. Direct injection per cylinder. It's going to be sort of a race setup here with a performance mid-level intake, nice and carbon fibery, which is just what we want, obviously. Pretty rich fuel mixture. And it's going to run on what, 98 octane super fuel. And we'll retard the timing for now. So right off the bat here, we can increase the red line to 10,000. So 210 horsepower or so, 130 pound-feet of torque. No tuning has been done. We'll do a standard tune. That's 140. That's 118. That doesn't work and that doesn't work. Well, that's, that's, that's glorious. We just ruined everything. Two hours later. All right, so after a bit of tweaking and modding, it's got 280 horsepower, which is about the same as the Yaris GR. But... No, there is no but our cars. That's it. We've got more horsepower. We've got less torque uh, by a lot because we've got a very, very small engine uh, per cylinder displacement wise. It's a very small. It's a 1.1 liter 16. This is less than 100 cc's per cylinder. This is less than 100 cc's per cylinder, which is crazy. It's going to be a rally inspired car. So that's why we're widening the body just a bit. Let's give it all wheel drive. Let's give it a six speed manual. We'll give it like a geared LSD. So pretty, pretty nice for this time, but not nothing crazy. We'll give it sports. You know, maybe we'll give it semi slicks because this is sort of a like a race car for the road. It's going to have sort of race car for the road tires and wheels. We'll give it two seats because I feel like you won't want more than one other person to be with you. Oh my God. Look at the back window. Look at the back window. That is very interesting. And I don't know if I like it, but you know, it's, it's, it's transparent. It's a window. It's a window guys. Standard interior, standard infotainment. It's got to have some sort of amenities to it. It's going to have, um, very dead electric power steering. We'll give it ESC though. And we'll give it like standard safety from the two thousands. This thing weighs 1900. And 75 pounds. <laughs> oh my god. Why is this so light? This, this car weighs less than a first generation Mazda Miata. But with like three times the horsepower. That's crazy. Not three times. More like twice the power. But still. A 0 to 104one seconds from stock. Which is kind of quick honestly. We'll make it a little bit more rear bias though. Okay so my game just crashed. And I feel like if there ever was a sign that this car is too crazy. It's, it's probably now. <laughs> It's probably now, guys. <laughs> Alright, so we're back in the game. I'm just gonna do a couple of things quickly. Increase the quality just a bit. Wait, what's the cost? So right now, this thing costs... Oh, yeah, wow. It costs 75 grand. Okay, we are we are cutting the budget now. This car is it's a little too expensive. So we're down to $62,500, which is a lot of money, but you know what? Maybe this is a premium vehicle. Just imagine the Aston Martin Signet, which was a hatchback made by Aston Martin. That was also quite expensive. Um, it wasn't really an Aston Martin. It was more of a Toyota hatchback disguised as an Aston Martin, but that's okay. We're basically doing the same thing, except ours is going to be even more crazy than the V8 version that they made. We are getting 20 MPG average, and it's actually fairly reliable at a 65 reliability rating. It's actually kind of reasonable. I think what we're going to do now is design the car. But before we do, I want to choose the name. I think we'll call this thing the Starzashi Garus. No relation to Yaris at all. And and the trim is going to be called the um, GV. Which means great value. Because this car is unironically a great value. So what I'll be doing now is a short time lapse on designing the car. So you guys can watch that. You guys can watch me design the car and how I design it. And then we'll hop into Beam and G's drive and drive this thing. Yeah, it's probably going to be pretty good if you ask me. So sit back, relax, guys, and enjoy. So we are designing my Garrus GV, which is a Yaris, but worse in every way, except the engine. The front end is going to be similar to the 2012-ish Toyota Yaris with a sort of a gaping mouth and these a little bit angry looking headlights and these intakes on the side, obviously. This is the GV version, the great value, great performance value version. What I'm doing now is sort of creating a custom front bumper, a custom front grille. I made the headlights shape and I'm going to make them custom as well. So I'm going in now and filling out the actual surrounds of the inside of the bumper. 
uh, getting each little curve there and making sure it works properly, adding some grill bars, because grills aren't just one flat object, and adding even more depth to the front grill, adding a bit more detail there. It still looks a bit flat, but I'll tweak it later on in the build. I'm going around to the side now, changing the wheels on the car, adding an area for the car's badge. We do have a nice aggressive hood scoop there. I'm now making the Sarzashi logo, which is the, the company's car logo. I'm adding a bit more depth to the grill, adding some sort of black surrounds, and making it just a little bit more in-depth looking, adding some front sort of lips to the front of the bumper. Again, adding more detail to the front grill, adding this sort of separation split in the middle, which is similar to my other Sarzashi vehicles, adding a very spicy looking v16 badge and now working on the front headlights so i added just two bulbs there adding some mirrors and i'm going to go back to the front headlights add a turn signal or at least try to add one in the front headlights to be weird looking a bit of a weird angle to work on to be honest uh, adding now with the actual front cover to the headlights they are very simple headlights they work and that's all that really matters at this point going to the side now adding a door handle a side skirt which i'll sort of move on later the back, it's a very weird shape, and I don't know exactly what I'll do, but what I am doing right now is adding some mud flaps to the car, making sure it can do some off-road kind of sportiness, adding a small little intake on the side there, starting with these interestingly shaped rear taillights, with a sort of black indentation in the middle, with these triple exhausts that I'm laying out now, working on the taillights, uh, making sure all the turret signals and all that jazz works, adding a rear reverse light, another indentation for the rear license plate, and some Sarzashi and Garrus badging. I just changed the color, and now finished in front of us, though, is the 2012 Starzashi Garrus GV. So first things first guys, I want to take this thing to the drag strip because it's a 300 horsepower, 2,000 pound all-wheel drive manual gearbox, a basically supercar for the road, and I want to see how it does. Now this thing has a similar power to rate ratio than a brand new Porsche GT3 RS. One thing I want to point out though is the back. Now not the taillights, no, now I want to point out the interior. Now, for $60,000, you do not get a steering wheel, pedals, or anything. It's extra, guys. Those are optional extras for the Sarzashi Garrus. But this, it's going to be fine, guys. The mud flaps are looking kind of dinky, but you know what? It, it, it's okay. This is totally fine here. This is West Coast USA Dragon Strip. We are going to do a 0-60 to 60 test and a quarter mile test. I want to see how this thing does. It does sound pretty gosh darn crazy, though. You brake boost. There we go. Banging off the red bullet, we're okay in the third gear. 3.9 seconds! Oh my god, that is fast. <laughs> That's crazy. The GR Yaris has nothing on the Sarzashi Garris GV, of course, because in a 12.1 to the quarter mile, which is pretty quick for a sub 300 horsepower uh, hatchback. This is not even, this is like, this is a hot hatch, guys. This is not a supercar, but it could definitely kill supercars at least in 2012. Is it going to do as well on the track? I mean, we have to find out at this point. We have to know. For $60,000, what kind of track performance are you getting? So this is a West Coast USA city circuit. Uh, we're going to do one lap of this thing and see how we can do on this thing. I, I actually don't really know what a good lap time is in this map. Uh, we'll go ahead and try anyways. I've got very little practice, and by very little, I mean I, I've got no practice at all, guys. One thing I want to point out, though, is I've turned off all the trash and aids because if we mess up, that's it's not my fault at that point. It's the car's fault. The car is not perfect, and it's, it's the car's fault if it crash. 3.8 seconds. That was downhill. Okay, we're turning left, actually. I've already messed up. This is this is going so well. Attempt number two. Let's see what we can do. That kind of rhymed, actually, and I'm, I'm a little bit embarrassed, actually. All right, we got to break a little sooner here. Let's it's apex a little. Let's lay apex properly. Okay, it handles actually pretty tight. There's definitely like a good bit of frontal grip. It turns where you want it to turn. Oh god, it's twitchy. Oh god, that was not what I wanted at all. Okay, uphill. It's depressingly slow. But we're not in boost. Oh god, I'm scared. I actually don't know this track at all. <laughs> Why is there... Is this like, what, California, San Francisco or something? I don't understand. I guess it's West Coast. It's close enough, right? 
Oh, wow, this thing is actually terrifying to drive. I, I don't know this track! So far, so good, though. You know, it's it's going pretty pretty nicely. Can we, can we cut the corner here a little bit? No, we're not going to try. Stay in third gear. Oh, gosh, it's a little tipsy. Yeah, so this car, the suspension is like... It's stiff, but it's got body roll. And the whole car just sort of tilts really badly. I think, like, my only other time on this track ever was one minute... Or two minutes flat, I think, so... I think they've actually beaten my all-time best time, which is not really saying much, because, yeah, I've beaten my all-time best time, which I set March of this year, actually, using the Wendover Soliad when it came to, no, 2021. I haven't done this track since 2021. Now, that, that is, that is, that's confidence right there. That's what confidence is. Confidence is trying a track you haven't tried in over a year, Completely blind with a car you're not familiar with. That's that's what confidence is. Or it's stupidity. I'm not too sure which. Also, again, a huge shout out to Opera GX for sponsoring the video. Definitely check them out. Link in the description. So after, obviously, a perfect drag race and an absolute perfect track race, uh, I think we're ready to send the Starzanshi off for a, a beautiful farewell. And by that, I mean we're going to jump it very, very fast. Um, and hopefully it explodes into a million pieces and we never drive it again. Now, I'll leave a link down below if you guys want to download the Garrus GV. Um, I don't know why you want to download it, because it's pretty terrible. Except when you're driving it terribly. That's when it's good. Um, yeah, guys, if you guys want to see more stuff, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to join my Discord server, also linked in the description. More videos coming soon, obviously. Uh, limit was 260 kilometers an hour. It was electronically limited. That, that, is a, that is a roll! Honestly, I'd say it's still in pretty good shape. Yeah, I'd say that's probably fine. I'd say this thing's in pretty good shape. Engine is hydro-locked. I'd honestly say that's probably an improvement from the previous state of the engine. That's probably better than what we had before. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you next time.